Hi class, this is just to talk to you about some of the supplies you might need. I showed you on the slideshow, this is what I was going to have you use. Basic, you can use any brand, but this is one I recommend. Um, titanium white and Mars black is what I'm going to use for the demonstration. Um, you want to also have some kind of palette. It doesn't have to be an actual art palette. It could be a paper plate or a plate or something. Pie tins work good. Those uh, disposable aluminum ones. I don't have the exact brushes that I told you to get because I can't find my painting set. I just moved some things around in my shed. So I'm going to be using uh, a little smaller round brush and a flat brush that's about the size. But number six and eight. These are long handled because they're acrylic painting brushes for canvas. A lot of them mostly are shorter handle, like about that big rather than really long ones. These are good for canvases so you can stay back from the canvas. You're going to want to have some paper towels with you and also water. So acrylic paint's water soluble. Um, you want to rinse out your brushes really well. When you first get them, you're going to want to run them under water and rinse up into the ferrule of the brush right here. It's called the ferrule. Make sure it doesn't have any glue because they ship them with glue and run your hand like this. You can use a small amount of um, dish soap or regular hand soap, but not too much. Um, you don't really want to destroy the brush with too much soap. Hot water, not, you know, warmish water, and really get it all cleaned out. I've used these before, so I don't need to do that. And then you're going to want to change out your water fairly often because it's going to get full of ink. I mean ink. Sorry, paint. I just did a demo for drawing the other day with ink, so I'm thinking that. Um, you're going to want to change it out so you keep clean water every so often. And this is the palette. So start out with, just put some of your paint on there, shake it up. Put like black and white on there. And then you're going to want to try to get that middle tone. Um, some of you may want to use like a palette knife. You can mix it in between. You don't have to. If you have one, it's useful. Not necessary. The main thing is you kind of want to make sure you don't get your white full of black and your black full of white. So that's why you're going to need paper towels to periodically rinse your, scrape your brush off, rinse it in the water. Rinse it in the water and then really get it clean. Um, and I recommend having the black, the white, and then try to get that middle gray first. So I'm going to show you an example of a really good version of this value scale that someone did. They basically matched that perfectly and they did a really great job. This is what you should be shooting for. Clean. They didn't have to do it all in one go, but they did. I don't think they taped it off, but they might have. But mostly, really even, clean steps. This is a way you could do it, but it looks like a really bad example someone turned in, unfortunately. Or you can cut it out. I don't mind if they would have... Um, they could have cut out swatches that are the same size and put them together. The problem with this is the jumps are not quite even, but really the bigger issue also is that these swatches they cut out are really janky and all over the place. And the jumps, I don't mind you cutting them out. It's not cheating. You just have to do it. You know, if you do that, then use a ruler, mark them off evenly it could be small it doesn't have to be giant and then cut carefully with your scissors don't have it janky that's craftsmanship you wonder sometimes probably why i go on and on about craftsmanship because um in the world of design and art how you do things like this um and even though you might not ever show this to other people you would show your process and how you do things like this is uh, makes people want to either be involved and buy it or hire you or not. So presentation is very important. If you turn your portfolio in to go to undergrad somewhere, 
they're going to want to see it and it's going to matter how well it's presented if you're trying to get a job as a designer or an artist or have a gallery or any kind of creative work including even if you're like well i'm not an art major i don't care about this well then i'll give you this advice same thing with your resume um, or any documents you're filling out to get any position in the world you really need to think about the presentation because it does matter to other people and it helps with the legibility so people understand it but also professionalism okay so practice it now this is an example of how someone else did it um, I wasn't too big of a fan of this but I understand it still works it's much better than Un, uneven, unneat version. These are a little small, but it is a good jumps and in, in value shifts. And then they did the five scale down below. That was nice. So you can do that. Here's another one. Not perfect. The straight and square, but it still works. And this one not looking so hot because it's not even you want to paint up to the edge so you're going to want to measure it if you want to paint it directly on there if you're not cutting it you still need to measure it out with your ruler the main thing is they got it too thin you can kind of see some of the white of the paper coming through here that means they're adding too much water to the paint okay and then i wanted to show you just somebody collaged their project they use thick paper look how they got glue all over the place so if you collage it you need to really get clean how do you get clean well you apply the glue to the small pieces and you glue them on it's fine to do a collage it's kind of interesting you cut them out and you can make your whole composition automatically with shapes but if you do that you need to make sure it's really clean and not get all this goop everywhere so that means you put the glue on the small shapes and then press them down just like your last, a couple projects ago, you did collage. Well, same thing. Be clean with it. It's perfectly fine to do that way, or you can paint it directly on, which is really nice. This is pretty much almost line work, so you really need to stay away from thin lines, have bigger shapes. But you'll notice on these, they painted all their white. They didn't just um, let it be the white of the paper, so you need to paint everything. Okay, so that's why I'm showing you this. I just wanted to just sh clarify a couple of things that we talked about in the in the presentation lecture. So that takes you through this material demonstration one about the materials. Next one, I'm going to use this here to start evaluating the the way the paint mixes and start doing some big shapes of the values in paint. And kind of figure out how they work with you um, that's going to be something important so you're going to want to have a scrap piece of paper and you can use or you use this and you cut it out and you, when you do it you're going to want to make sure your circles or squares of paint are really big swatches that way um, you can cut them out and they'll be fine when you cut them out you'll have enough room to make it even okay i'll see you in the next video where we're going to Mix some paint together and um, make a value scale.